Hi there, and welcome to today's episode of How the Game Was Won. In today's episode, we are in at the FIDE Grand Prix in Tashkent for the game of Mamedyaro versus Andraken. The opening was the semi slav defense, and the game was played on the 21st of October 2014. As with the semi slav, the first moves of the opening are all fairly standard, with where you have d4, d5, c4, c6, knight f3, knight f6. Knight c3, a6, e3, e6, queen c2, knight bd7, and b3. Now, in the previous Grand Prix, Mamedyarov's attempt against Andraken, he used. Uh, Mamedyarov used. a3 instead of b3 and was successful in that game as well. This game continued with black playing bishop d6, bishop b2 castles, bishop b2 e5, c takes d5, c takes d5, d takes e5, knight takes, kingside castle, Bishop b6, rook a c1, rook c8, queen b1. Let's just take a brief pause over here to look at the structure as we have it. Which is a, the very typical isolated pawn structure of the semi slug defense. But it's important to note here that black really has no problems coming out of the opening. He'll always be able to defend his d pawn. Uh, because he's he, he's got the uh, more or less uh, control of the files. His bishops are more uh, more centrally developed. He's um, he's got a significant space advantage coming out of the opening. So although white has a bit of a structural edge, um, blacks m uh, much more active peace positioning is more than sufficient compensation. The game play here continued with black playing knight fg4, knight takes e5, bishop takes h3, bishop h2 plus, king h1, The bishop defeats back to b8. Um, and black has now has some really, really serious threats coming up on the king's side. One of the reasons why um, this structure is acceptable for black is that it gives black a rapid option of launching kingside attacks. All you really have to look at is the serious potential mating threat that can happen along the lines of queen to h4 and to h7. So there are some some really really serious attacking possibilities that Black has at his disposal. And players will be will advise to keep these in mind. In the game we continued with instead of playing the um, H takes which would open up the path for the Queen um, Black plays Bishop takes, and obviously Bishop takes again, and still White can't take the um, 
the apparent hanging piece simply because of the uh, Queen H4 check is will be deadly as well. Um, here white played Queen B3. Uh, something else that would be could be wor worth looking at that is in another game would be the knight takes b5 rook takes c1 rook takes c1 bishop h3 knight f6 d takes d takes and queen d5 which will land you up with, with check and it's a very equal George endgame obviously from, from black's perspective uh, that wasn't what he had in mind but although that wasn't quite what he had in mind he played the surprisingly imprecise move of queen d6 which immediately uh, puts him back uh, quite a bit in his development although he's, he's making the, the really really simple threat down onto h2 it's easily defendable Black, uh, the game continued with f4 as the, the, the clear defense against the making threat. Bishop b6, rook cd1, queen c5, and knight takes b5. Because ba uh, basically, black no longer had a really, really clear method of being able to defend b5. The problem now for black is that he's White's managed to gain a uh, degree of mobility, control of, of the d-file with the um, double queen and rook, although black has got the queen and rook on the, on the c-file, uh, all uh, white effectively needs to do is just sludge the bishop and you'll be able to drop the queen quite happily into, into d7. So what does black do? Bishop takes, queen takes, exchange queens, bishop a7, e4, e8, e5, rook lift into the second rank, rook b1 to defend the bishop, h5, rook b7, Rook takes b7, bishop e3, f5, rook f5, which then gets the rook up of the second rank. Rook e1, rook comes back down to the second rank. Rook takes, rook takes a4. Here yeah, white is up a solid form, but winning from this position will be a really, really hard thing to do. Uh, black is still active, and he's got pressure exerted over both b3 as well as obviously b5. Again, continued with rook e6, king h2, h4, rook e4, and this move again gets a question mark, which is f5, simply because it gives even more structural advantage to to white here with the backward g pawn now becoming effectively the spot isolated and a useful target for for black strokes, sorry for white strokes. So we go rook d4 looking at doubling up rooks in the in the seventh rank. Rook c6 
And here White makes his mistake. A little bit of mistakes going back to two forwards. Um, right at the moment the computer is screaming at me for, for White to play with, with D6 with a, a combination continuing with either Rook CC2 and Rook G6 with a clear winning advantage or Rook takes D6 E takes Rook D2 Rook B6 and White's pass pawn on the, on the B file is, is, is incredibly dangerous however Black continued with so in this position White made the mistake of playing let's just take it back playing Rook B8 check which immediately just about nullifies the advantage that he had built up and the black defended with King H7 he had Rook H4 check King G6 Rook H8 Rook CC2 G3 again black is starting to, to pull back the position Rook takes G2 check King H4 B2 Rook F6 so Rook B6 check and what we have now is all of white's advantage even though there's Materially, a pawn on the board. The computer is showing at the moment that the position is dead equal in drawish. So, with King F7, and with his with Mometorov with his King in a weakened position up on the edge of the board he panics and does a a pawn push but his alternatives of e6 his alternatives were rook b7 e6 rook e8 d king b5 rook b7 check b4 and rook g8 again sitting with a very equal game but instead he played e6 check which allowed rook takes rook takes, king takes and b4 so now what we've got is the pawn that white was up has obviously been equalized and what's more the situation as it is is that the advantage within the game has swung completely in in black's favor however it will require really really clear and precise 
structural in gameplay to be able to convert the point because as we know that rook and pawn end games are really a normal normally a huge grind to be able to convert so the game continued with g5 check and what we'll do here is just watch carefully as Andre can gives us a solid lesson in rook and pawn in gameplay on how to convert your stronger position because here what black has, has is the clear pass pawn on the f file and the white king is trapped against the against the edge of the board in the h file so we'll now need to see because if the white brings the the rook away then the then black has the possibility of developing a clear mating threat against the king on the on the edge of the board so let's have a look see how it played out king h5 g4 king h4 g3 so now we have two pass pawns and a small push with the f pawn and you'll have connected pass pawn b5 you get a takes b a takes b f4 for your connected pass pawns rook g8 king d7 rook g7 plus king c8 and it effectively here is that uh, white resigned because his position is completely hopeless against rook f2 g2 f3 and a rook f1 combination so that's how everything concluded please post your comments and questions down below and click the like button and subscribe to my channel and We'll see you next time. Cheers.